Now, like, let's look into the final aspect, final part of this presentation. Like, we'll look into the case study. Let's say, like, a customer comes to you and then asks to develop the application. Okay. So, everybody is going to have the setup, and then the like uh, the process, uh, running process is there, and then you stop application. Uh, when you press the button, the application is going to stop. So, here, like, uh, what we're going to do, it is like uh, we'll look into uh, different scenarios when you selected a specific type of design pattern and look into the developer experience. Okay. And developer experience can be like a highly subjective as well, but uh, we'll try to like, uh, you know, uh, have a scale. So let's say like uh, we develop the application using a state machine. Okay, so when you start with a state machine, if you see here, so for the setup code, like uh, using a state machine, we are pulling here for the user to interact with the setup button. Okay, and then like a process, as you can see, the next state is going to handle the process, which is also pulling code. And finally, for the stop, like uh, we'll be pulling it outside for the stop. So basically, like uh, all the requirements are complete without any issue using the state machine. So limitations, like at least none with respect to the requirements. Okay, all the requirements has been able to be completed using this. The next one is basically using the state machine elements. Now let's say we use the different design pattern. Now here, what actually happens is like we have actually put the event for the setup process and stop command inside this event case. So only when we press this button, we are need to process certain kind of like a functionality. For example, if I press the setup, like the setup will happen, and then it will wait for the next event, and then so on. Okay. If I press the stop, then like the stop event will happen, and then loop will stop. But since like the requirement is like our process has to run for t duration, what we did is like when we press the event, we'll go to the another state called process, which will in turn will take us away from the event structure. Okay. It will take us away from the event structure. So it will run for t seconds and then come back into the idle again. Okay. So what actually happens is the limitation here is if you use the state machine events is since the all the controls exist into the another case called idle, while the process case is running for t seconds, you will not have access to those controls at that time. It will read the data. Once it will come back, that will even immediately like uh, you know uh, execute. But at the same time, while the process is running, you will not have access to that button. Okay. So because of this reason, like uh, state machine events in this particular kind of uh, requirement of the application is not like uh, recommended and like uh, it is going to impact the user experience. Okay. So basically like uh, it looks like not a good choice. Yeah. So if you look into the producer like a uh, solution using like a uh, producer consumer events, I think like I forgot to like uh, change the slide here. So uh, basically like uh, what actually happens is uh, like uh, let's look onto only this side. Okay, so event will wait for the very similar to like uh, state machine with events. So like uh, it will wait for the events and everything. But now what actually happens is the top loop will not execute anything. All the responsibility is given to the consumer loop. So all the process will happen in the consumer loop. So it is like a very good in terms of the future actions. Okay, the limitations of this is like a none of the respect with the requirements because. Produce consumer loop with the events can handle both event as well as the polling code effortlessly. So you will not have any like uh, you know deficit in terms of like limitations in terms of like uh, requirements covering. But the limitation, another limitation is uh, going to be like uh, you need to do a little bit more programming or like I uh, need to learn more about like how to implement it. There will be like a certain overhead on like uh, using it because if you go back like uh, very quickly, okay, if you look into the state machine and everything if you look here so in the previous case like uh, your setup process and everything process will take place here while like a uh, uh, stop process as well as the setup button events will be handled there okay so this is like a uh, uh, the user interface is separated from the processes so that like uh, this can work as an event and uh, when you send a single in instruction it will work as an event when you send a series of like a uh, command from here or like a let's say generated within itself it can work as a polling coder. So this can handle like a both of them effortlessly. The only limitation is like uh, it will have slightly more overhead than uh, you know using the state machine or state machine with events. Now like uh, this is a custom comparison somewhere for this particular application. Okay, you can like uh, this is like a uh, you know it can it can be endless. The permutation and combination of like uh, how you want to do it is endless. So here like uh, what you're doing is like we have given like a certain metrics. To like a different design pattern and see, okay, you can also try this out at your workplace and see like a which design pattern was favorable with the particular way, okay. 
uh, this will the initial task but after a while like uh, you will gain the intuition on like uh, which design pattern should go with what okay for example here like uh, based on this application which actually had a polling code so suitability matrix we have given maximum number five so this will get five out of five is to learn and implement since this is a single loop so five out of five extensibility not that much you can add like a new states and everything but if you want to add like a certain functionality like timeout or panel codes or different kind of events or something then like you cannot have that extensibility but uh, with the current uh, requirements we have implemented like a, this is good and uh, relative overhead zero okay because, like you don't need to do extra coding or anything relative overhead basically means we're comparing this against these two okay so this will be completely depending upon which you are selecting now, if you look into the step machine events, we saw that we're still be able to complete all the requirements, but while the process was running, like uh, the user interface was not responsive. That's why like uh, it was not good enough. So we gave it two out of five. Next is like a uh, ease of learning and it's good enough still, but like uh, I need to learn about event, how it works and everything a little bit more. Actually it's zero because like uh, it's like a, the requirement is a polling code while this is an event and we give like a minus two, okay, compared to this one because uh, we need to use a little bit extra. Now, if you look into the produce concept loop, the functionality suitability will give five out of five. Is to learn, and it's like a little bit harder than like these two. Okay, more work you have to do. Extensibility is like the maximum. You can add as many features as you can very easily. Okay, because it's a multi loop application. And uh, relative overhead compared to these two is going to max. So we can do the score of this 30 and 3 and 7. So we'll go with the state machine. So in this case, like uh, we saw, state machine was a clear winner so you can also like do this kind of uh, things at your place so coming into like our final slides so first thing how way how to select the is the first thing is you are going to look after whether it is a single process multiple process or multiple asynchronous okay? so if you have to go uh, this kind of stuff then you can go with the QA or produce control over events if you come a uh, single loop you can go with the state machine state machine events if you go with this one you can go with actor or you can dynamically call VIs and different kind of approaches you can use. Another kind of thing is like, uh, do you need a polling kind of a code or in demand? This is the another aspect you need to choose. Okay. And uh, another thing to consider, like I say that if you just develop the application and forget about, no issue about that. But if your code has to be maintained by somebody else, if your project is a, like a ten years project or five year project, then you have to consider. You have to go into that. Like I said, like a PC, QMH, and Active Framework are highly scalable and extensible in nature, but takes overkill okay, for simple application. So you have to consider that like uh, whether you want to develop the application that has to maintain them for long time. And the finally, like uh, the final thing to consider is, are you the single developer? If you are a single developer, then you can use whatever you want. There's no restriction up to you because it's just like a uh, learning and breaking down and everything. But if you are working in a team, let's say like a, uh, here you got like a CLA, CLD, CLAD and everything, but there is a person who does not know like uh, much of a, you know, NI recommended guidelines or design patterns or something. Or there can be the customer base, which you have to deliver the project and everything, but they do not know. Okay, they do not know like this kind of design patterns. So in that case, it's like, let's say your customer base does not know anything about the OOP, but they have to maintain that OOP. So in that case, like you're using the object-oriented programming, like it might seem like a good from your side, but like it is going to be an issue afterwards because the guys, uh, the customers will not be able to use it. So that is why like it is always better to decide design pattern in the beginning. Okay. Now like uh, let's move into the challenges. These are the final few slides, one or two slides. Uh, one thing is like a deadline versus quality of code. I know like everybody faces this one. Let's say you have three months of uh, like a target or like a, uh, you need to deliver the code quickly. So like whether if you spend time, quality of code will go up and everything, you need to consider, okay, this is where using the libraries, creating the libraries, reusable code comes to the play. Another thing is the learning curve, like how long it is going to take, the investment requires, the time required to learn it. And the next thing, like I discussed, your development team proficiency. All of you, if you have a team of development team, then like you need to be on the same page. Everybody should know like which design pattern they are implementing and you need to know like how to maintain it. So if you look into the learning curve, where to start and everything, if you look into the time and effort, state machines are easy to pick out and play. Once you master this, you can go to the PC, and then you can go to the QMH, and finally to the Active Framework, because Active Framework will require you the object-oriented principles and so on, okay? So these are the different ways, like uh, you can proceed. Uh, there are certain things you can learn. So 
the first thing like uh, I told you about like, uh, you know, the developing proficiency and everything. You can take up the structure training from NI, uh, like uh, uh, CPIs, uh, for example, like a community is also another thing. And you can gain badges from like a NI website as well. Okay. Now the summary, okay. So we are, I think like we're in dot, uh, we still have some time. So design pattern like enforces the developer to build more scalable, like I discussed that. The main objective to, is to the standardize the application and design pattern is a must be selected always. You have to use the design pattern, but you have to select based on the requirements and then the future scope, okay? And don't try to overkill with the sophisticated design pattern and never have a <laughs> favorite design pattern as well, like I discussed already. And consider the development team and maintenance team, okay? The proficiency level of your team as well as the maintenance team uh, before considering particular design pattern because what actually happens is initially you might have used the very advanced design pattern and given it to the customers now the customers like uh, you know you have delivered it that's fine but what actually happens is every time the issue comes they will come back to you now like uh, you will become the point of contact for the customer support and that is not a good thing because you should be like uh, uh, solving issues okay solving problems of the world not like a debugging and everything so it's okay now finally, like uh, we have learned about, you know, a little bit about design patterns and everything, how you can develop the, uh, you know, developer experience, but uh, you have to implement alongside design pattern, you have to follow your know, recommended guidelines as, a, as well as the s'mores, okay? So you can just like uh, follow this and then this is going to make your life far more easier as the lab developer so that you can save your time, money and energy as well. So these are the references. So uh, we'll be sharing this slide anyways. I think the video is getting recorded. You can make use of this and you can learn about these things okay, from the AI website as well as the LabVIEW wiki. And if you have any questions, like uh, you can uh, write uh, to me or like uh, you can just like, uh, uh, you know, put the questions in the chat box.